Similar to a hypothesis testing for one sample mean, we are following series of steps in conducting hypothesis testing for one sample proportion. So for our first step, we need to write our hypotheses. So our hypotheses will basically our null and alternative hypothesis and make sure to write or define your parameter that you are being that you are measuring. So in this particular step, our null hypothesis will be p equal to zero, and we know that the null hypothesis will always be an equal sign symbol. And for our alternative hypothesis, we have three possible alternative hypotheses. It could be p greater than zero, p less than zero, or p not equal to zero. So this, well, these are the uh, inequalities that we will use in writing our alternative hypothesis. Now for our second step, writing out your conditions which is really important in hypothesis testing so that we will be able to rely on our result. Now for normality, we're not going to rely on the bell shape curved for our proportion. Now we're going to use the rule of thumb number two to uh, satisfy normality and the rule of thumb number two is n times p greater than 10 and n times q greater than 10. So this will be our um, rule in satisfying normality. And for independence, we need to know that the population is b bigger than the 10 times the sample size. Or in our word problem, it could be indicated there that each trial is independent or, or um, not dependent from the succeeding trial. Now for number three, our sample should be randomly selected just like in our hypothesis testing for our sample mean. Now for step number three, our calculation in general form to find the test statistic, it is statistic minus parameter all over the standard deviation of your parameter. But since we are working with one sample proportion, our formula here will be z equal to p hat minus p, which is your um, population proportion, all over the square root of pq all over n. And once we have found our value for our test statistic, we are now ready to compare our z using our p-value. And our p-value may come in three um, illustrations. This one is for p less than zero, which is our left-tailed test. We have an alternative hypothesis of p not equal to zero, so we have two tailed tests, and our alternative of p greater than zero, which gives us the right tailed test. Now, once we have compared our, z, our p value to our significance level of 0.01 or 0.05 or 0.1, we'll be able to write our conclusion, which is either to reject the null hypothesis or not reject our null hypothesis. So now let's have our first example in conducting hypothesis testing for one sample proportion. Now for this example, Ryan, a starting player for a major college basketball team, made only 40% of his free throws last season. Now during the summer, he worked on developing a softer shot in hopes of improving his free throw accuracy. In the first eight games of this season, Ryan made 25 free throws in 40 attempts. Now, we want to investigate whether Ryan's work over the summer will result in a higher proportion of free throw successes this season. Now, what conclusion would you draw at 1% significance level about Ryan's free throw shooting? So, we're going to conduct our hypothesis testing on this word problem, but first, let's identify the numerical values that we will use in working in our hypothesis testing. Now the 40% will be our proportion or population proportion and we're also given the number of trials which is 40 attempts and this will help us in finding our p hat or our statistic for our um, calculation. We are also given a significance level of 1% which we will use in comparing our p-value which means our alpha is 0 0.01. Now this is our test statistic one sample proportion and for finding the p-hat we know what p sub 0 is or our proportion or population proportion which is 40%. Our p-hat will be computed by using 25 divided by 40 which is what Ryan's free throw shot was uh, during the 40 attempts. So 25 over 40 and our sample size of 
40, which we will use in our test statistic. So now that we have identified the numerical value that we will use in our hypothesis testing later on, let's conduct our hypothesis test for this particular word problem. Now for this hypothesis test, our step number one is to identify our um, parameter being measured. And in this case, it's P, which is the proportion of Ryan's free throw shots. So our null hypothesis is going to be P equal to 0.40. So we believe that Ryan's free throw shots is 40% for our null hypothesis. And for the alternative hypothesis, it's going to be P greater than 0.40, which means Ryan's free throw shot was improved by the trainings he had during, over the summer. Now for step number two, we need to write our conditions. So for the first conditions, we will treat that Ryan's free throw shots are random because each shot is obviously randomly taken. And for our normality, we will use our rule of thumb number two, n times p is greater than 10, which is n of 40 or 40 trials, and our population proportion of 40% is 16 greater than 10. So this one is satisfied. So let's see if it's also satisfied for NQ greater than 10. So 40 times 0.60 will give us 24, which is indeed greater than 10. Therefore, we are able to satisfy the normality condition for this step number two. And for step number three of independence, we will treat Ryan's free throw shot or each free throw shot to be independent. Now, for step number three, which is our calculation, we're going to use our test statistic, which is p hat minus p all over the square root of pq all over n, which gives us z equal to 2.90. Now, our p hat, once again, is 0.625 because 25 all over 40 will give us 0.625. So this is our p hat based on um, Ryan's performance on the word problem. So now that we know our Z value, which is 2.90, we are now ready to go to step number four, which is finding our P value. So this will be our normal curve, and this will be our Z of 2.90 with an alpha of 0 0.01 to compare it to. So using your calculator, normal CDF, or your table of values or Z table at the back of your book, probability of z greater than 2.90 will give us 0 0.0019. So the p-value of 0 0.0019 will determine if we're going to reject or not reject our null hypothesis. Now to summarize what we just did, our hypothesis is p equal to 40% and p greater than 40%. The conditions are all satisfied with a Z value of 2.90 and a P value of 0 0.0019 compared to 0 0.01 for step number five, which is our conclusion, with a P value of 0 0.0019, which is obviously less than the alpha of 0 0.01, we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, which makes our test significant. Therefore, Ryan's free throw shots training has improved his performance on the free throw shots based on our hypothesis testing.